been an incredible journey, a lot of ups and downs. And at my young age, I know that a lot of you are saying, oh, well, he's still a child. But I can assure you, that night, I was a child with a dream. And I was not going to let diabetes slow me down. And to this day, it hasn't. And at times, when blood sugar is high and it's low, it would be a lot easier to throw in the towel and say, enough's enough, I'm done, and I'd like to just have a day off from having diabetes. But it just doesn't work like that. And so when I meet these kids that come up and say that me telling my story has inspired them, oftentimes I laugh and just say, it's hard to believe. Because when I talk about it and when I share my story, I'm just, I'm just saying what happened. And to think that it could encourage and inspire someone somewhere in the world is an amazing thing. And it's, it's, it's crazy to think that the song that I wrote a little bit longer is something that, that helps someone somewhere. I was at a piano in, in, in Canada as we were shooting a movie called Camp Rock. And it was a day where, where my blood sugar was out of range and it was a tough day. But I sat down at the piano and the song came so easily. And it was kind of self-therapy for me in the moment. But last night, I met at least 10 kids with diabetes who said that that song touched them. And again, it's hard to believe. I've always had a heart for helping others. And I realized that I've been given a platform to speak out and to encourage and inspire the people living with diabetes. Reaching out and sharing my story is one of the ways that I can give back to others. My brothers and I also started the Change for the Children Foundation where we give to organizations that help children. Last year alone, we raised over $1 million for charities that are close to our hearts. These funds went to such organizations including pediatric diabetes research, education and treatment, as well as diabetes camps. For the past year, I've been an ambassador for young people with diabetes as a part of the partnership I have with Bayer Diabetes Care. Our goal is to encourage and inspire kids living with diabetes with their simple wins, which are everyday victories for managing your diabetes. We started a website called nicksimplewins.com. Each day I accomplish some of my simple wins that I wouldn't be able to do um, without the support of my family and friends who help me manage my diabetes every day. Every day I need to monitor my blood sugar, which requires me to test it about 10 to 12 times a day. I use Bayer's contour meter, so when I'm, when I'm busy on tour, other people like my parents and crew can carry around the test strips to make sure that I always have my tools to be ready uh, to test. Since by my diagnosis, I've worn my dog tag to let people know that I have diabetes. Then Bayer and I thought it would be great to create our own dog tag that anyone can wear as a symbol of support for all people with diabetes. This came to life when I officially launched the Dog Tag Program during Diabetes Awareness Month last November. Proceeds from the sale of every dog tag go to Jonas Brothers Change for the Children Foundation. Another project that I launched earlier this year allows young people to creatively express their own simple wins through an online contest. It invites young people with diabetes to record a 15 to 30 second video that creatively demonstrates their simple win. The, the video submissions can be demonstrations of a song lyric, photography, painting, drawing, acting, or any other form of creativity. So far, we've had our monthly winners since April, and you may have seen the video submissions when you walked in today. In September, I'll get to select the grand prize winner who I'll have an opportunity to personally meet. Our partnership has made an impact not only on my life, but on so many young people with diabetes not only through the programs we've launched together, but also through Bayer's ongoing support of the Jonas Brothers Change for the Children Foundation. I am so grateful for all that they have done to help my brothers and I reach our, our individual goals. Once again, I want to thank all of you for coming here today. I see many familiar faces in the audience that I, I run across during my efforts to raise awareness about diabetes, and I think of you each day. All of us together will be able to help young people with diabetes feel supported, and less alone. I'd like to invite Nancy Katz from Bayer back up to speak a little bit more about our partnership. Nice. 
I want to do this. It looks so cool. <laughs> All right. Okay, so good, good afternoon. I'm Nancy Katz, and I'm Regional Head of Bear Diabetes Care for North America. Thanks, Nick, once again, for sharing your story. I can't think of a more fitting place to do so than here at the Historic National Press Club, and there's no better audience to share it with than the members of the press, people who gather and disseminate news. We're delighted you could all join us here today. A couple of years ago, we at Bear took notice of a young rising star named Nick Jonas who publicly acknowledged that he had diabetes. Sorry. And before we even met Nick, we were impressed by his candor and his maturity in opening up to his fans with that news. We were also struck by the obvious closeness of the Jonas family. Nick's mom, Denise, his dad, Kevin Sr., and his brothers, Kevin, Joe, and Frankie, and how they all embraced Nick's diabetes to support him. So we reached out to Nick about partnering with Bayer toward the common goal of simplifying life for people with diabetes, and we were thrilled when he said yes. It was latest August that we announced the Bayer Diabetes Care and Nick Jonas partnership, and today we continue to be amazed by the number of kids and adults whose lives are impacted by diabetes that Nick has been able to reach with his message of hope and inspiration. It's clear that when Nick talks about diabetes, people listen. And until there is a cure, the greatest weapon against diabetes is increased awareness and knowing how to manage it. The work that Nick and Bear are doing together through Nick's Simple Wins enables young people with diabetes to connect with Nick's experience. And they've told us that he inspires them to achieve their simple wins. Or small everyday victories for managing diabetes that can lead to big differences over time. Nick has truly embraced and grown into his role as a diabetes ambassador. We could not be more proud of how he's touched so many lives in so many ways, from raising diabetes awareness to raising funds for education, treatment, and research, not to mention the work he did on the Hill. A key element of Bayer's partnership with Nick that has proven to be a very successful raising, fundraising tool is our gift to you today. Hopefully you all received one of Nick's dog tags as you walked in. I certainly am wearing mine very proudly. Nick designed these dog tags similar to the one he wears, and they are available at nicksimplewins.com for a $5 donation, with all proceeds going to the Jonas Brothers Change for the Children Foundation. Since it was introduced last November, the dog tag program has raised $75,000 for Change for the Children, and thousands of people are showing their support for people with diabetes by wearing them. Nick, to launch our partnership last year, Bayer made an initial donation of $100,000 to the Jonas Brothers Change for the Children Foundation for you and your brothers. And today, in celebration of our ongoing commitment to your partnership with you, I am pleased to present you with another $100,000 check. Big night for check. For the, for the Jonas Brothers Change for the Children Foundation. Nick, we're so honored and proud to work with you. Are you uh, done with your speech? Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to go uh, to the many questions you all have for Nick. So um, the first one comes from Galit, age 16, who was diagnosed with juvenile diabetes at age 12. As, it, as an international celebrity, you serve as an inspiration to those of us living with juvenile diabetes. How did you make the decision to, to share this very personal struggle with the public? What were some of the... Uh, things that you had to think about before you went public? I think the main thing was making sure that I had it under control myself before I talked about it uh, publicly. Um, so for the first six months, um, I continued to learn on my own and with my family how to manage my diabetes, how to properly take care of it to make sure that I could then feel comfortable to be able to speak in front of people and, and really share my story. 